Hey guys, it's Michael. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to a new video. In this video, I want to explain to you how you need to set up your weighted belt on your waist and for all the different exercises to maximize your performance. To explain to you how to wear a weighted belt, what we need, of course, a weighted belt and we are using a king of weighted one. As this is a perfectly new one and we're just unboxing it for the video, we are gonna sell this one to one of you for 50% less as there's probably some chalk of it after the video. So with the code YouTube, it's valid for one. Just try it out guys. I don't know if it has been taken yet or not. And if it works, you are the lucky one getting a king of weighted belt for 50% off. So all the best to you then. Let's unbox this one here. We have, of course, the belt itself. We have the chain. For the king of weighted one, this is fabric. And we have the carabiner. And we will come to this in a second. Good. First things first. When you are about to buy a belt, make sure that you get one that is long enough for you. So when you're wrapping it around the waistline, that it's possible for you to close it in front because only then the weight belt can really sit comfortably on your waist and is not moving. And therefore you just use a carabiner, snap it in like this and the weight belt is closed. Then. We have two more carabiners. One goes in this loop and one goes in the other side. And then you just attach one here and you attach one here and then you have perfectly set up your weighted belt. It sits nice and comfor comfortable on your waist. It's closed so it's stable, cannot go down and both ends of the chain are fixed on the belt. And as we're talking about belts, let me give you a small elevator pitch about the king of weighted belt. Yeah, to just convince you that this one is or should be your belt to go. So first one, the most other belts have this one. It's super, super noisy in the gym. Also, if you're wearing it, those uh, links of the chain, they often impinge your skin, they often impinge your clothes, which ends up in the tons of holes on the clothes and on your shirt. So let's not use this one. Way too old school. We're gonna use the nylon one. It's same as stable. You have the same functions with the different links to make the belt longer and shorter, which we'll cover in a minute. And so this is definitely better because the whole belt like this is less than half a kg. So you don't need to carry too much additional weight with you and you can really just calculate with the additional weights and you don't need to include the belt. Then the king of weighted one comes with three carabiners which comes in super handy because you can close the belt. Also a big feature is actually a non-feature because we don't have a pad here on the back. Because if the, the belt has a back pad, what happens is that the stress is transferred to the lower back. So the pad creates more area here, so more stress is applied to the lower back. And this is something we do not want to have with weighted calisthenics because it pulls you into this anterior pelvic tilt hollow back position here, which is something we want to avoid for most of the calisthenics upper body lifts. So then some other small features like we made the fabric here a bit longer so that these metal rings are covered by it so that when you close it, your closes are protected. And when you close it like this here, then you don't impinge your skin and you don't impinge your closes. So yeah, thought through, um, pretty nice belt. You should definitely get one. Okay, the next thing that I want to cover together with you is how you can adjust the length of the chain and so how you can adjust the weight position so how high you want the weight to be. Therefore, you just open up one side of the chain. So you have it like this, the belt is still closed, one 
carabiner is attached to that metal ring here and then you put this side through the hole of the plate. I would always use the middle hole even though some weights have also holes on top. Rather use the middle one and then you just close it on the other side. And now we have the weight like this. If that is too low for you and you want to have it shorter, that's no problem. Now you have several options on how to do that. You can, with that carabiner here, just shorten the chain by using another link of it. So you can, instead of using the last one, you can just use this one and put it in like this. And now the weight is way higher, like this. Then you can also, if you're too lazy to change this carabiner all the time here, you can just leave it in here in the last link. And then you go through this metal hole here like this. And again, through the plate and you just put it on the other side. Again, way shorter. And you can now also use combination of both or just don't use this link here, but another one. So you wrap it through and then you just go somewhere in here. That's what you have those different links for. Just use them and then you can shorten the chain in endless possibilities and you can really find the sweet spot of chain length and make it work for you independent on how tall or how small you are you will always find the perfect length with the setup and the belt still sits comfortable on the waist, it's closed in front and you now have the perfect length for it. The first exercise that I want to talk with you about are pull-ups. I will show you two different options on how you can set up the belt with pull-ups. One where you have the weight in between your feet and one where you have it pretty close to your hips and will also show you what the pros and cons of each belt position are. So at first we're setting up the belt, so closing it, wrap it through the hole, attaching it and I will start with the low weight position. If the weight hangs low, I have a lot of space in between my legs without needing to straddle a lot to attach a lot of weight. So if you have bigger bumper plates and you cannot hang the weight high because then you kind of need to straddle like this to get a pull up done, definitely the low one is your choice to go because then you just have way more space to attach weight to the belt. The second big advantage is that I can control the weight with my feet. So when I'm swinging in, I can impinge the weight between my feet and now I can create body tension against the weight. And also in the top position, I can push the weight into the position that I wanna have it. So to close the pull up on top, I can move the weight in front and I can just create a lot of body tension against it, which gives me very, very good control. But of course, the low position also comes with a big downside. We have a very, very long chain. That means once we start swinging like this, it's very, very hard to break the movement down because we have such a long pendulum here that once you start swinging, there is no coming back. So when you're working with a long chain, make sure that you are focused, that you work with a lot of core tension and a very vertical path of pulling. So instead of pulling like this and then starting swinging, which is not a good idea, you need to rather focus if you're going with more reps on a controlled execution, controlled negative, with a lot of body tension so that the weight is not swinging. That doesn't matter if you're just doing one or two reps. So for very, very low repetition sets, it doesn't matter because there's not much time to start swinging. But for higher rep sets, this definitely matter. 
Now, that basically brings us also to the advantages and disadvantages of the higher position. The biggest advantage here, of course, is the pendulum is super, super small. That means the risk of swinging is very, very low. The second advantage is it feels more natural because the center of mass of this plate is very, very close to my own center of mass. So especially for beginners, this might feel more natural. But any than that, there's no big advantage. And especially for advanced athletes, I would always suggest the low position, but still this one is nice to go. Second exercise, the weighted dip. And here it's super easy to explain because the same principle apply as on the pull-up. That means the lower position has the risk of swinging more, but gives you way more space to attach a lot of weight. It gives you more opportunity to create body tension against the weight. And so, especially for more advanced athletes that are moving a lot of weight, the lower position is the way to go. For beginners that, you know, are not that safe with the technique, tend to swing more and want to have a more natural center of mass, then you go with the higher position, but I prefer the low one. So when going in, I can control the weight, create tension against it, and then dip with that position. Very nice. And then one nice thing to know, what I see a lot is that athletes with pull-ups and dips have something like this or like this, always make sure that the belt is centered and that the weight is centered. You just can avoid imbalances with this. Another great exercise where you can use a weighted calisthenics belt is the weighted push-up. I prefer the setup on the rings because it gives me more space to the floor, so I'm not too limited in right range of motion. So I just set up the rings, I don't know, roughly in between your knees and your hips somewhere, and then uh, use a box or a chair, whatever you have to elevate your feet. And then you just put the weight around the belt. You need to experiment a bit with the length so that you can set it up comfortably, but also have sufficient range of motion. And then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna put the weight very, very close to the chest. Because if I put it here in my lower back, the limiting factor of the exercise would probably be my core as it pulls me into a hollow back and I don't want to have my core as a limiting factor. I want this as a chest exercise, so I put it very, very close to the chest. Then I just go into that setup and wrap it out. And in exactly the same way, this of course also works for bodyweight rows. The only difference is that you are flipping the belt 180 degree and you have the belt here and the weight hanging here and then you just row. For the ring rows, you need to experiment a lot. <laughs> it just took me three attempts to get the setup. I hope now I have it. Just starting seated like this, putting the belt in close to the chest and then getting into starting position. <sighs> Works. So if you want to get one of these, make sure to go on kingofweighted.com to just get, in my opinion, the best weighted calisthenics belt on the market. And to the lucky one of you with code YouTube, you can save 50% on exactly this belt. It's a bit used, but still super, super nice. So good luck to one of you.